Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Rick Valdez of Ocaso Knives. Ocaso Knives is a new brand that got my attention with its sophisticated, lifestyle-driven pocket knives, the big name designers attached, and the hard-use tactical pedigree backing the knives. You see, Rick started Ocaso Knives after 20 years in the C-suite of a major American knife company. I had the pleasure of meeting Rick at Blade Show this year and had a chance to experience the knives in person, uh, which were luxurious and wonderful. But I really look forward to hearing his story and finding out how Ocaso came to be. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the show. That really helps. And you can also download it to your favorite podcast app and listen whilst on the go. And as always, if you want to check out the show on Patreon and help support it, please do so. Uh, you can do that by scanning the QR code on your screen or going to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Rick, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, sir. Thank you for having me. This is pretty cool. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. Uh, what I think is pretty cool was uh, making it, wandering over into uh, the the uh, the other room at Blade Show, so to speak, my favorite room, actually, and coming across Ocaso Knives. I had just heard of you um, in you know the not too distant past. Uh, they came, uh, you guys came across my screen. Uh, with your gents knives and uh, and these beautiful collaborations, um, you got to tell me you you have different marketing than anyone else I've seen and a, a different spirit uh, behind your brand. Let's let's jump right in and find out what what defines Ocaso knives. Well, thank you for that because there's a lot of heart and soul that's going into this, a lot of passion, and we're definitely uh, doing this because it's it's a style that um, that I like. So, and it's a husband and wife team. So she's, I, I, I'm gonna have to thank her for a lot of the, uh, the messaging and the branding that you're seeing because um, I, I met her at the previous company. I, you know, I guess it's well known now, um, pretty much that I used to work for Cold Steel Knives. So that's where I met my wife. So, uh, and she was a graphic designer there. So a lot of the, the branding and messaging that you're seeing comes from her passion. She loves photography. Uh, she loves graphics and she's taking care of the, the branding. She takes care of the website. And I think it's wonderful. And of course, with, with her being married to me, she knows what, what, what my style is like. And so this is, the message that that she's creating has come out of my mind and, and for being with me all these years. So thank you for reading it loud and clear. I appreciate that. And and I also heard that a lot at the booth at, at the Blade Show. People walking up the booth and just saying, well, I get it. I get it. And it's uh, that's cool. It's hard to miss, Rick, because uh, we live in a in a society, in a culture that has become so casual. I lecture my daughters about it all the time. I'm a little bit of a curmudgeon. But, you know, I'm like, what's up with these kids wearing their pajamas out? And, well, you know, that we're at dinner. Shouldn't he have a collar on his shirt? This kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I like to tease my daughters about that. But it's true. We've become awfully casual. And, and, and this, the Ocaso brand, has a different feel. Yeah. And it's, I've been like this ever since I was a kid. And it's, it's funny because... My two young daughters just pulled out uh, their yearbooks that they just received, and we were telling them, make sure you get you get them. And they're young; they're they're very young, uh, eight and ten years old. And we're explaining to them, make sure that your friends sign the books. And uh, as an example, I pulled out my yearbooks from when I was in high school, 16, 17, 18 years old. And Bob, honestly, it's it's I, I didn't even remember, but it's kids saying even back then to me, it's like, you're, you're so GQ, I uh, <laughs> love your style. And it was, it was just interesting that that came about. Um, and then talking about, you know, the style that the, the uh, Ocaso brand is, you know, showing itself and, and lending itself the way it is. So 
Um, it, it comes easy. It comes easy. I do have a particular style. It's not like I dress up every day. Uh, but when I do, it's uh, okay. It's a take it to that level where, you know, let me grab the watch. Let me grab the pen. And what was missing a lot of times was a cool looking knife. And so here I am now creating knives that, that I like that, that, that matches, you know, when I go out to a particular event or if I'm dressed a certain way or, uh, or, or a certain style or certain slacks or certain shirts. So, uh, and so far, you know, it's great. It's great. I love it. Well, I, I hope I'm not uh, overshooting, but I think you and I might be same generation, if not close to the same age, because <laughs> you described, described yourself in high school as very GQ. And that was what I sp aspired to be. And looking back, wow, I missed by a mile but still i was always in my mind i was like how would james bond handle this or like yeah. you know what would james bond wear to the prom you know um <clears throat> but uh so this means gents knives gentlemen's knives and that's that's a a loose category and we all kind of know what it means uh you know i know it when i see it but how do you define a gentleman's knife and how does ocaso knives um defy some of that well for me it's <sighs> You're going to see that my blade lengths for, for right now are not going to be over three and a half inches. So three and a half inches um, and shorter is the key for me. Something that's small, something that's very light, slick, slim, uh, clean lines uh, is what I'm looking for. And that's a, a lot of what takes place when I'm having a conversation with the, the, the designers that are coming on board. And um, it's sometimes it can be a departure from what they're creating, right? Or what mm -hmm. they're known for. As an example, Andrew Demko, right? I mean, there's a lot of big, beefy, tactical, rough and tough knives out there. And that's the world that I came from. And that's great. And that's cool. I just, I just felt um, I had to take a little different approach. Um, and so that's what it is. It's something that lives in the pocket, um, um, and owns a, you know, I want to own the pocket at this point in time. So that's what it is to me, something that's very beautiful, um, premium materials, uh, something very pen-like at this point. And then, you know, the slim line knives exist out there. There's other great gigantic brands that have their slim knives out there. And with all respect, you know, to them, I was carrying some of them um, and, you know, testing some of them. Um, and when I sat down with Andrew Demko, and said, you know, what can we do? Because he said he was he was going to come on board and help me out with some designs. I sent them some of those knives. I sent them some pens from my collection, and out came the solstice. Uh, you know, this is our take basically on the slim gentleman's uh, style knife. Well, so okay, I have a lot of questions um, because this gentleman style knife is is intriguing to me. I don't have too many of them. I realized mm -hmm. um, I, I have always been kind of into the tactical, self defensey kind of stuff. It's just my taste, you know, my wheelhouse. But but I also uh, do have some finer knives, and they tend to be smaller. Um, the gentleman's knives. Something I like about the Solstice when in picking it up is that. It still has a wicked vibe to it a little bit. It's got a longer blade. It's long and slender, and it's of beautiful materials and beautifully made. Um, and it and it seems to me uh, like reminds me a little bit. Now I'm talking about the third knife or the the first and the third knife in this lineup down yeah. below. Uh, it seems like a modern day stiletto. Something that is. It's not just an innocent gent's pocket knife that's non threatening. It it has a little bit of that menace. Uh, which I don't know if that's just me seeing it through my lens. So how much did working at Cold Steel um, um, influence your taste, even though your taste uh, seems to be very different? Uh, well, it, it was the philosophy over at Cold Steel was a lot different. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was what I brought over from Cold Steel, it's going to be more of the the, the business aspect uh, of getting out there and marketing, um, you know, the company, how we did it at Cold Steel is, is very similar uh, how we're doing it here, um, just trying to create the, the demand from the bottom up. Uh, but, you know, in terms of a gentleman's knife that Cold Steel came out with, there was the Lucky. You know, it was mm -hmm. a slip joint, small, uh, little blade knife that came out of Italy. 
And that was pretty darn close right there that, that, you know, hit it off with me. I carried that. I like that. Um, and that's, you know, it, it, the slip joint, small knives like that, that's very traditional looking, right? So right. when I'm seeing a gentleman, when you see a gentleman's knife within my lineup, it's more of a modern look, like a today's look. Um, very pen-like also, a little longer, slender, like you're saying. And stiletto, I've heard that too. You know, I, uh, I've heard that uh, people say that when it comes down to that knife. So... Yeah, uh, stiletto. Actually, when when I when I bring it up, I think more of like the uh, the Renaissance gentleman with a stiletto in his. You know, not necessarily. You could use it for 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 dirty work or whatever. But in a lot of cases, it was there as a a symbol of um, you know status and and mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And um, you know, what you're making is a luxury item and 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 a status symbol uh, amongst. Um, knife collectors, you know, I, I've, I've got a case full of them. And and I don't mean status like I, I put my expensive knife in my pocket and I expect people to care, but I know how well made this thing is. Now, when I asked you about uh, cold steel influence, I was thinking less of design, but when I was picking up um, the knives, because I picked everyone up that you had and played, they felt very, very well built and very wow. robust, even though they they come in this uh, uh, gentlemanly package. The quality absolutely has to be there. Um, so yeah, you're correct. I mean, it was always quality first when it came down to cold steel products uh, that was instilled in me, instilled in all of us. Uh, that's one thing that's part of this whole designing and coming up with um, with one of our products is quality and function have to totally be there in addition to the design. Um, so absolutely, I mean, I, I, I should have mentioned that, but absolutely that that was a huge in our life when, it, when working at Cold Steel. Uh, and, and, and then something I'm seeing in your lineup that, that is uh, very pleasing is that um, to me, the um, Solstice gentleman's knife, w without, without question, it, f it fits all of those um, uh, it checks all of those box boxes, but as you look at the different models, you've got uh, Kurt Merkin, amazing design. I mean, you've got some heavy hitters. You've got Mike Wallace, uh, you have Seton, um, and they're all making knives that look different from one another and mm -hmm. look different from what you might think as a traditional gents knife, but they all are, are, are hitting that, um, well, they're all striking that tone. What do you talk about when you sit down with the designers and what, what are those conversations like? Well, I first uh, introduced myself as a new company and just explained to them that this, this is who we are. This is um, our direction. And uh, would you like to work with us? So uh, first of all, I'm very grateful that these guys are jumping on board and they're being part of my new journey. Yeah. And I've been, I've been very, very, very lucky. And, and then to have patience, um, you know, with us because, you know, it does take a while. You know, I'm the little guy that's coming in and talking to these big factories and getting some support. Um, and but that's what I'm saying. And then there's also, you know, I love your design. You know, would you like to go to market with it under the, the branding uh, of Ocaso? And so you'll see a lot of the similarities in some of these designs. So you'll see that diamond-like pivot. So if I can mm -hmm. change their pivot um, to the Ocaso um, diamond, uh, the wraparound uh, deep carry pocket clip yeah, uh, with the branding there as well. And most of them are all just, they're, they're coming on board. Um, if, if, they, if they've all said yes to all that. Now, if we implement it and, and I see it in a sketch and it doesn't look right, you know, then I, I won't do it. Like um, uh, Kurt Merrick's knife, one of his designs. I mean, that thing is so cool. I can't wait to come out to market with it. Um, you know, for right there, that clip didn't really lend itself to that design, but we went with the diamond uh, pivot um, on his knife. Um, David Seaton, you know, you see the no clip on there but that's his design and i liked how clean that was and that lives at the bottom of the pocket so um so the talks are basically hey you know there's certain things that we want um on on your design are you okay with that um and then are you okay with taking it and being living under the brand of ocaso and so far yes and that's what i did last year at blade show all i did was just walk around and recruit some designers um 
and he had a conversation with Kurt American for American Live, David Seaton, uh, Wes Crawford also. Oh, yeah. Uh, coming on board soon. Uh, but I knew Andrew Demko. Uh, I knew Mike Wallace. Um, John Denko is also handed in a project. So there's a design in the works from him uh, coming soon as well. I think that uh, this is speculation, but I think as a knife designer, being approached by someone like you um, would be very exciting because it's an opportunity to do something different outside of your own brand. Let's talk about Demko knives. We all know them for uh, being the most robust and innovative, hard use knives, you know, folding knives um, out there. But you know, where where does Andrew Demko get a chance to show his gentlemanly side? He, he of course, could do something like that for Demko Knives, but it would kind of be uh, off topic or, 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 you know what I mean, off brand for him to do that. So this is a great opportunity to express himself. And, and I, I'm sure the other designers, I speculate, might feel this way a great opportunity to to flex some different muscles as a designer and show off some different skills, a different side of yourself. Absolutely. I mean, look, at, to me, that's talent. Look what Andrew Denko did. Yeah. You know, he's known for those big, you know, strong, uh, you know, knives, you know, fixed blade or, or, or pocket knife. And he came out and helped out with the solstice. I mean, I think that's true talent that he can do that. The quality, function and design that makes us happy and it becoming our hero product and, and helping Ocaso get up and off the ground. And uh, yeah, true talent. And same with everybody else, everybody else. So we're, we're completely happy. And right now, yeah, that's that's the original Solstice. Then we have uh, Damascus. Um, and I don't know if you had the opportunity, but we we showed the, the Harpoon Blade Style Solstice coming out soon. Yes, I saw uh, that. A Warncliffe also um, Solstice coming out. Um, so there's going to be some new variations and expansion on that category. Actually, pretty darn soon. Next week, there's going to be an update to the website. Um, and um, update to our social media posts. So, and that's just right around the corner. Wow. So explain a little bit, des describe what it was like. Um, kind of, it's gotta be a big decision. I'm gonna start a knife company and uh, and we're gonna start it on Wednesday. Like how does that, how did that work for you? Well, as, as you know, as you saw and read and heard that December, 2020 is when Cold Steel was sold uh, to GSM. Yes. And, uh, what had happened after that is it, there was some people that, that reached out to me wondering what I was going to do next. Um, you know, come work for us, but those conversations always had, um, a relocation topic and, and, and I didn't want to relocate. So that, that was kind of tough. I, I was happy that people were reaching out and, and just asking, what am I going to do next? Um, I have, I'm in Southern California. I have my parents that live down the road and my in-laws that live in the other direction. My brothers are in the area. Mm -hmm. So uh, my wife and I were at a crossroads when it came down to what am I going to do? So we decided, to, um, we, 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 we talked about this long and hard and we said, how about coming up with um, a, a knife company? Um, you know, I, I went to a couple interviews and, and Bobby was so weird because now here I am. I I hadn't been in an interview in over 20 years. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was the one always giving the interviews always. And so it just felt a little different. Weird. It's, it's like, am I really going to leave this industry with all the relationships and the connections that I that I've made? Um, and so that's what happened. I, and then I had a conversation with Andrew because he is my friend, too. I've known him for a long time, you know, 15, 16, 17 years. And he said, I'll, yes, I can, I can help you out, of course. And so that's what it, that's what happened. And it was several months before we actually launched. So we launched nine months ago. That's when we turned on the website, but there was a few months before that, that we were working and talking to uh, factories to see if they were going to help me out. Um, they all said, yes, they jumped on board. And then, as I mentioned before, you know, the recruiting, when I went out and I went to multiple trade shows to do some recruiting. Um, and it wasn't easy. It's not like everyone said yes. I mean, there's a lot of people that just, mm, I don't know, um, which is fine. I understand. I'm, I'm a new guy. I'm not a gigantic brand that's going to, it's going to be, you know, doing miracles for someone, you know, when you take one of their designs to market. Um, but that's, that's what it was just kind of the experience of what I went through after Cold Steel sold 
um, you know, in December 2020. And Mr. Thompson and I are still friends. He's he lives. We're neighbors. He lives up <laughs> over on the other side of the hill. So he's he lives in the same community. I run into him every once in a while when when I go get a cup of coffee. Um, I ran into him at Blade Show, um, but uh, that's what happened. Um, it was long and hard, and and here we are nine months later with with the, with the brand and a company up and going. So you touched on it a little bit before uh, your your wife's um, input, and let let me just say as a sidebar, if she had anything to do with the Cold Steel catalogs, my hat is off to her. I am, I and my brother for years and years just <laughs> poured over those. I want that. I want that earmarking. Uh, I always loved uh, great great graphic design there in those catalogs, um, uh, but when when you decided and when you and your wife came to this conclusion that you have to start a knife company which i love i love these stories i love family knife stories they come up again and again and i i love them uh but any case uh when you decided this did you know right away what your brand identity was were you yeah. like i'm rick valdez and i'm stylish and let's make these knives and the whole thing or, or did you was it a more calculated uh kind of um discussion no, you know, I hate to say it, but I, I, it was more like, yeah, I'm Rick Valdez. I know a lot of people. I'm going to start an, a, a knife company, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it was my wife that said, well, hold on, you know, wait a minute, Rick, you know, that's great, but you, you've got, there's a lot more to it, you know, so she's the one that you, uh, you don't have the drive, right? But you come, you can combine that drive with, with her vision and outcomes Ocaso, right? So she sat down and she actually uh, was the one that just put all this together on the back end. And I'm, you know, lucky to have her in my life, you know, to help yeah. me put this together. Um, yeah, having connections and knowing, like, you know, distribution channels and factories is key and very important, but there's a lot more to it, you know. Um, you know, as you're mentioning that, the branding and the messaging and 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 from from uh, the catalog to the website to our social media post to to our booth um yeah it's it's um that's you know what i have to say on that point well you know uh here's something that that especially a blade show uh strikes me uh when i go is with every new knife company um that i you know well, I think we all welcome with open arms, but with every the coming of every new knife company, that is um, taking a customer away from another knife company um, to sell those knives. And and so, you know, it's your job as a company owner to figure out who those customers are, who you're going to try and attract. Um, who, what what segment of the knife community, the knife buying world has Ocaso entered into? Um, well, who would your competitors be if you were to frame it that way? I have a lot of respect for uh, William Henry, right? Mm -hmm. His knives um, are really nice looking, they're super premium materials, but they're way up there in price, right? They're, they're way up there. Uh, Chris Reeve, I have respect to um, that company, uh, but you know, my understanding there's a there's a huge backlog there, and that's great. You know, um, so there's a little pocket that that I have found, and there's a little pocket there amongst them. Um, and you know, Dijo, I like Dijo also. Um, you know, they they make a a cool, slick, slim little uh, pocket knife. Uh, it's one style, and their branding, their messaging is it's very similar to ours. Um, so so right there. You know, and my take is it's an entire lifestyle branded company. You know, it's not just a category because you have some of these giants that have very similar knives, um, but it's just multiple SKUs. It can be just a category. And then they have so many other categories, you know, the fixed blades, the, the oh, combine, I see what you mean. right? you know, uh, on and on. Right. So for me, it, this is this is what's going to be just this. Um, and there's many projects in the works right now i have other things that i will expand into um you know i have that uh, case that knife storage case that people like a lot um i have other cases i have uh leather goods slash wallet category coming out i have desk knives um oh yeah coming out um pens also 
So it's basically, again, stuff that if you look at, you know, my my desk, you know, I got desk knives that are sitting here. Yeah. Um, mine are going to be a little unique, a little different. Um, uh, in the knife cases. Can I can I show you st stuff? Oh, please do. Um, but but I, I got to ask you, even before you show the knife case, I, I love that you're using the term desk knife. I yeah. got the I got the term a case has a desk knife that I've never but I have desk knives certain knives that I never carry but they live right here and they have different so how when you are designing when when you're when I'm not sure if you've started but what is this desk knife going to be like you you got to explain this I love so it's it. definitely going to live on on the desk and it has a little stand that it's come it comes with and it's going to be a functional little uh, desk knife that you can use to to open up a box. Um, you know open up an envelope and so forth it's got a it's got a very beautiful unique style to it and um fidgety i can say that i don't want to say too much okay um, you know because some of these some of these giants out there they can they can take an idea and get out the oh market. yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. a lot faster than i can man and so i gotta be careful what i'm doing and what i say um, oh no no i i understand that actually because you have a you have a real niche and uh, people could start sniffing, sniffing that. There are some, um, there are some companies that come to mind, like James Brand, which is a very lifestyle-oriented yes. uh, company. Um, their 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 knives take a variety of different shapes and stuff, but but they're always kind of doing something cool and hip. Um, and and that's that, to me that's a slightly dim, different demographic than yours. To to me, yours is a, a little more James Bondy, a little more gentlemanly, a little more boardroom, uh, but but not not limited to at all. You could all, also throw everything in jeans and and or or even use it outside. I mean, the sense I got from holding them was that you could even use them to do you know regular pocket knife things. They're not just fancy, you know. Right, um, it, and that's the strategy. The strategy is the one that's the gen gentleman's, you know, light purpose knife. You know, you've got the the solstice that you take out. That's solstice you use Monday through Friday in your suit. Uh, but if you want to go out for a little adventure, hiking, uh, light camping, then the strategy is the one that you can throw yeah. in your jeans or your gear bag. Um, and it's that's still the one designed by Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace, yeah. Do you have one of those on hand? Do you have uh, these knives on hand? Sure, I sure. I have I have them all on hand. So let's <laughs> let's let's show them off. We've we, we've teased long enough. Let's see. Uh, I've I've been uh, staring at the one behind your head from time to time. I love that. Let's see. So we've got Ooh. the the strategy uh, in a few variations. We've got Jade um, G10 with a satin blade, and then we have it in. Also black PVD coated, and this this is um, two of the strategy variations. We have it in all aluminum handle, black oh, on nice. black. I don't know if that's coming in clear. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, regular just black G10 handle, uh, satin blade, and again, it's they they all have that diamond Ocaso. And you know it spells out Ocaso in the the pivot, right? I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. You can that. see that in your in your uh, logo. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and then this is a carbon fiber G10 pew ply handle on this, and so that's the one that you can use for the outdoor. Right. For the outdoors. Nice uh, clip then, point blade. You've got that big, uh, like a larger ergonomic handle with some of the little finger wells in there. Now, what are the materials on that on that particular knife? The strategy so by Mike Wallace. It's a K one ten D two steel coming out okay. of uh, German Germany. So um, I know a lot of people, you know, they're beating up D two, but you know, oh. we used D two before, and I think maybe they're beating it up because. Um, D2, if they just say that and they're not expressing that it's from, from Germany or from Europe, then maybe it's China D2, right? Yeah. Uh, but no, this is it, it, you know coming from Europe. I've got the certificates that show that. And of course, I'm working with factories that I, I believe and trust and that I've been working with for a long time. 
I, I oh. love Bowler K110. Here, here's here's the deal, Rick. Uh, every time a new uh, steel comes out, a super steel, another one drops off the back end and becomes unacceptable. So it just became D2's time with, uh, I don't know, maybe it was the advent of Magna Cut. D2 had to drop off the back end. But I remember when D2 first was introduced and it was... It was on very expensive knives, and it was held up as a super steel. And it's still awesome. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, just because something else exists doesn't take away from its own qualities. Um, a and B, K110 is awesome, and for outdoor applications, perfect. Absolutely. And you bring up a good point, because a lot of people are asking me if, if I'm going to use those super premium steels. And the answer is yes, uh, but I need to work with, with the materials that are available right now. I can't wait a year to, to, to two years for something to come in um, because that doesn't help me get up and out, out into the market. So at some point, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to use those premium steels. Uh, I mean, I'm working with the steels that, that I've worked with for a long time that proven themselves that were great. I mean, look at all the the, the beating and the bashing and the marketing we put behind those steels. So they were, they were proven to me there. They're proven to me now. Right. Um, and so that's, that's where I'm going in terms of the S35 VNs, uh, uh, the VG 10s, the AUS 10, eight material steels that I'm using. Um, it's available for me. I need something that's here and right now so I can get out to market. Um, but the premium steels, you definitely will see it. You will, will see it. Well, that's also a nice, I mean, what you already have with the S35, with the K110, and with the, with the um, um, what was the other one you said? Um, VG10. The VG, VG10. I mean, those are, those are all really great proven steels. And if you were to lay them out, they all kind of fit on a, a graduated scale. So you're, you're able to cover a number of different uh, applications, but also people, you know, buyer types, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Um, so it's, you know, and I did talk and I had conversations with factories recently and there's other steels that are available, um, that we'll, we'll be build using sooner versus later. So uh, in, in between what I'm using now and the, the super premium steels, there'll be other steels, uh, coming, coming in line very shortly. You're using some pretty premium handle materials too on the, um, on the solstice, for instance, you're using fat carbon uh i think you showed some is that fat carbon or camo carbon some it's one of the exotic uh u.s carb yeah it's fat carbon coming out of lithuania oh lithuania okay that's right yeah lithuania. so it's a company um uh, out of that area that that's of course sends the material over to italy and italy is using it and so that's that's being used on the damascus uh solstice and then the high grade titanium and carbon fiber on the solstice coming out of the the taiwan factories Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the the factories. This is a, a blessing of the modern age. The fact that uh, American knife uh, designers and and smaller companies or or uh, new new companies can outsource to really outstanding companies, you know, that are really producing amazing products in Taiwan and China. Um, so tell me, and Italy. Um, which makes me particularly proud. Uh, so tell me about, uh, I know some of you have these relationships in the past, but what's it like working with these companies and how do you decide where you're going to have what built? Right, right. So certain factories are better at doing something than, than the other factory. Um, and so that's where some of the um, decision takes place is, I know this factory is better at making this certain style uh, knife at a certain size, uh, just from experience from before. Um, and and again, these are factories and their role is, and they've had a, a big longstanding role in the industry making for a, a lot of big branded uh, companies out there. So I trust them, I know them and they do, they're great knife makers and they're doing really well on, on my stuff. And a lot of people coming up to the to the booth at Blade Show, and and saying, you know, I I heard about you, I read about you online, and then they pick up this, the 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 products and they're blown away. They're blown away with how they feel, um, how the flipper action just fires open. Um, you know, the stainless steel cage bearing systems that in there, just it's smooth uh, deployment. So they're impressed. They're impressed. Okay, so we all know that um, Italy and Taiwan are among, you know, some of the, or I should say the 
the factories in Maniago, Italy, and it, in Taiwan are some of the best in the world. And and there are debates over, you know, different, you know, knife nerd types like to debate over who does a better job or what they're better at. Um, what, in your opinion, what would identify or... Um, what am I trying to say? Uh, what defines an Italian made knife versus what defines, say, a Taiwanese made knife from one of these exceptional uh, factories? For, for me, it's the material. I mean, if it's true uh, premium material coming from Europe or Italy um, down to, to, you know, even the leather, um, that's to me, and in, 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 in addition to the craftsmanship, you know, anything from Italy. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a knife or, or if it's a watch or uh, it, just anything. I agree. It, it's all all that. Anything that comes out of Italy, it's classy. It's well-made. It's beautiful. It's elegant. And as you can see, there is a big difference in the looks when it comes down to the solstice. Um, and so to, to me, I mean, that's how I'm going to answer that question. It's just yeah. anything coming out of Italy. It's just, it's just a beautiful piece. I agree with you. Um, I just the Italian made knives that I have, they almost all have crown spines. That's just coincidental. But to me, that's always a little luxury thing like, oh, they cared enough to crown the spine. But there are other things, uh, just the feel uh, that of my Italian knives, they just have a different, I don't know, I don't know, a different je ne sais quoi, if, if, if I may. Uh, but then and I moved to the Taiwanese knives I have, some of them uh, Cold Steel, some of them Spyderco, uh, and and some other uh, knives from Taiwan. They're built like um, very, they seem to be very precisely built, and through that precision, very strong. I don't know if that's just my impression as a, as a, you know, an, a collector or what, but they both, uh, I think Italy and Taiwan, you couldn't have gone better. Yeah, and I'm having a good time working with these factories. Again, it, it was great to just meet up and regroup with them. And once they heard that I was coming back in the industry doing my own thing, um, they, they were happy to hear it, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be working with them. And there's been a lot of a lot of other factories that have approached me, you know, wanting wanting to work with me. Um, yeah, China. There's been a handful of China factories that want to come work with me, but I, I I don't I don't know them. You know, I know that they're out there. They're doing their own marketing. They have their own uh, Instagram uh social media posts and so forth so it, it's it's a little different from from uh from me back in the day where factories are their role was supposed to be behind the scenes right but now you've got factories that just go out straight to the market and just killing it you know yes them, that, that's fine but you know the factories I, I work with their role is just to be historical great peacemaking knife makers of the world um but yeah at other factories you do i I talk to them. Uh, I have respect for them. I've seen their quality of work. It's great. Uh, and that that's where a lot of people are also coming to me and say, who's the OEM? You didn't ask that question back in the day. Yes, right. You know, that was a trade secret back in the day. So that's yeah. there's been a lot of changes in the industry. You, you know, in two, three years, there's been a lot that, that changed, and which is great because I'm still learning. But I'm still very teachable, right? So there's yeah, a lot yeah. of new things coming my way. So who's who's OEM? I'm like, oh, I, you know, do you really need to know? Yeah. Does but none I of your business still work or not? <laughs> I, 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 well, yeah. I the way I want to be respectful, and the way I am answering that now is like, okay, that's a very interesting question. But the way I can answer it is, I think you're probably expecting me to to mention a China factory, right? Because, again, those are the guys that are marketing themselves. And they're OEM for a, a lot of the big branded companies, but they also have their own brands. Right. And um, they're looking for that type of answer. But even if I told them who my factories are, they're not going to know them. Yes. Right. They're not. You know, so uh, that's how I answer and have that co conversation. But it's out of respect that they're asking that question now. Of right. Course. Because and it elevates. And I tell my factories, I said, you guys need to stay on your game. Because now you have all these other factories. If someone's asking who's OEM, they're now being watched, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So their quality is now has a name to the factory. Okay, so they're not going to want to tarnish that, you know. So it, I think that's great. So everyone has to have a high standard of knife making out there, which benefits us and benefits all the knife brands out there in, in the world. Uh, yeah. It's, knife making has been elevated. Terms of the quality so i think that's good for for the end consumers and for the market 
and you have people who love guessing oh this feels this got to be a best deck or a riot like um so that that has become part of it that that uh, guessing game but you you mentioned something interesting you said that uh, the knife world has really changed a lot and i'm thinking yeah this man has been two decades in and then you said in the last two years oh yeah so so that that's interesting to me because i i was expecting you to talk about a long gradual change across the you know the 20 some odd years you've been in the business but so so uh lay it out for us what is the change that you have seen first of all in your entire time but also in these last two years that's been so profound <laughs> well the entire time the way look check this out the way we used to market cold steel was with 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 a vhs tape okay we had our marketing videos approved videos on a vhs that we used to send out and that's yep. that's how people saw you know the visual aspect of what our knives could do um to now everyone has a cell phone that can do videos in the backyard can do the testing and so forth um and it doesn't doesn't take decades for anything to change in today's world whatsoever and so when i jumped back into this industry um it, you know i had my role i had my responsibilities at cold steel and there was teams doing everything you know we had a marketing team social media team and so forth and now that i have my own company i have to dig in and do it myself hmm. and um i'm seeing a lot of impressive stuff coming out of many of these these factories uh, i mean the brand these branded knives out there they've been around for the for a long time great designs the designs on pocket knives have changed a lot and it's it's really cool it's really cool to see that it's not just the rough and tough clip point mm. uh tantal style knives there's modified clip points now there's modified tantal style points um and and the looks on the 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 handles are just beautiful the materials that people are using now too yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was impressed. I was blown away when I just had this, when I had to create an Instagram, you know, uh, page, it just started looking through it. I'm like, my God, what has happened here? All in a positive, great way. Yeah. You know, this is good. You know, better for me too. Now that I'm coming out when, when I'm coming out with good looking knives is one of the keys. It's, it's working. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's a real, uh, Renaissance time for the knife industry. I mean, um, and, and it, it, doesn't seem to be slowing down and I, I hope i'm not jinxing uh, it by saying that but i mean every day i see something new and exciting to me and to me that means that the market is growing and and that uh people from outside of the quote-unquote knife world are coming into it and i i feel like brands like yours are are responsible for that to a to a great extent because uh, it's sort of crossing the aisle if you will into you know there there could be a, a guy out there who's quote unquote gq who loves watches as most of us do and likes his cufflinks and is proud of his wedding ring and uh likes to put on a nice you know and and then and then is called one day gee sure wish i had a pocket knife like grandpa gave me that time and then he goes and he finds you guys and that's a knife that fits into his lifestyle and boom now there's another person in the fold who understands you know that these these are great tools they're worth paying for and they're worth um integrating into into our our personhood absolutely bob and and you're you're so right you know at some at, at blade show and at shot show um you i've had doctors that come up to the booth you got lawyers are coming up to the booth you got high-ranking C-suite individuals come into the booth um, that carry knives, um, but like what we're doing because it fits. There's more. It's more fitting in their suit or when they take it out and put it on their desk. Um, and 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 that's what I want to do. Continue to reach out to those guys. There's still so many people. I love the knife community. It's just that's another thing too. It's wonderful. It's it's very united. It's very vocal. It's very supportive and um but there is a whole nother world out there outside yeah. the, the the knife enthusiasts the knife aficionados and knife collectors on, on gentlemen who don't know that yeah you can add a knife to your your watch and pen collection and when you're done with your knife take it out and set it next to you know those pieces put it in your little you know wallet caddy and on your desk or on your shelf um one individual actually came up to the booth and and bought some pieces and um 
the first thing he said, these are just going on my case and they're not going to be touched. They're just beautiful pieces to display. Hmm. Um, I think there's a lot of that with a lot of knives, but it, it, I think that's cool to hear that. You know, it's cool to hear that. And well, it's one last piece. At some point in time, Bob, you know, I hope, you know, my goal is to be to place an ad in GQ magazine. Hell to, yes. To talk to those guys. <laughs> yes. You I know. think that's a great idea. It used to not be a question. Uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, my grandfathers both had um, pocket watches. With, well, one grandfather always had a pocket knife, period. But my other grandfather uh, had more of a suit and tie type job. And uh, he had a pocket watch and it had a uh, little knife attached to the, the fob, you know, it was just a little, and my grandfather wasn't a knife guy, but he always had a knife on him, you know? And uh, to me, that was just, not to me, that was just a part of what you had on you. You had something to start fire because most likely you smoked back then, but you had something to start fire. You had, you know, your wallet, you had, uh, you know, your spectacles, you had your knife and your pocket watch or whatever. Um, but you had those those critical items. Let me ask you this. Uh, I, I want to get back a little bit to the the change in the knife world um, as you've seen it. Uh, you must be aware, I'm sure you're aware of the many um, uh, enthusiast designers, people like me who have channels, who, um, who have had a thousand knives come through their hands. They've really developed a taste for what they like. They design a knife, they have it OEM'd, and now they have a knife company. I have several... Um, colleagues and friends in this knife world uh, whose knives I own. And and it's pretty amazing to just pick up and say, wow, they just, they drew this, they had it made. And not that it was easy. I'm not suggesting that, but, mm -hmm. but it, it is, it seems like there's a lot more access, a lot more level of playing field these days than say when you started out in the business. Completely, completely. You have, uh, it, Instagram influencers is another big thing. You know, when I, you know, when, when I was in the role in my previous position, there was maybe one guy, two guys who is the big influencer and you, you always wanted to reach out to him. Now they're all over the world. They're yeah. all over the world. And there was, there was a lot of influencers that came by the booth, uh, a lot of influencers that I reach out to. Uh, and I'm stacked up in terms of <laughs> a follow up work from blade show mm -hmm. to reach out to these guys. Um, and, and props to them and respects to them with, with what they do and their talent. Yeah. You know, they're talented people with, with the videos they put out, with the imagery and, and, and the pics and the branding themselves. But yes, all of a sudden you hear that now they're coming out with, with their own knife. Um, yes, it, it wasn't like that before, Bob. And you're right, there's all access and factories are open up to that. And I think by all means, we all should try to partake in one form or another and have fun and have a crack at it. But you're right. It's not easy. It's not easy. Um, but, you know, jump in if you can. It's not easy for me either. It's not like I can go knock on the door for the people I was working with 20 years and say, hey, yeah, hey, bro. Yeah, I can help you out. Right. No, it's not like that. So. Um, so, yeah, you're right. I think I wanted to, to touch upon that is respect for those guys that are that are actually doing it, giving a shot, going out and putting their time and effort and their energy into it because it's not easy. And prop, we should be giving props to everybody. And I, I, I respect everybody in the industry, big or small. Yeah, I, I, um, I've, I've had a taste of it. I, I've had a design of mine, uh, well, it's half mine, my blade uh, produced. We made, we, uh, the knife maker made 25 of them, custom knife maker. And you know, basically sold to my friends, people who watch the show who are interested and that, you know, I made like 80 bucks on it, you know, but, but the point is, you know, um, it wasn't for that. I'm not quitting my day job, but I am participating more deeply in this hobby that I love. And to me, I, I, I don't even call it a hobby. Um, it's a little something else than a hobby for me, but, um, I think in any way that you can, this is this is an interesting thing. You brought up the talent of of these influencers. It's true, and you see it through um, through the videos these people put put out. It's I, I feel like with so many people now, um, with this sort of modern way of expressing yourself, whether it's making a design and setting it off to an OEM and having a knife produced, or whether it's making a video about the knife, uh, this whole modern way of making is bringing out creativity in a lot of people who. Otherwise, I feel might not have that avenue. Yeah, absolutely. And thank goodness it's there for them now. 
you know, because there's a lot of people that should be sharing their their passion and their talents and, you know, showing off their skill sets. Um, I, I'm sure as heck impressed with a lot of these people that, that I find out that they're they're making their knives in, in their garage, you know, in the little shop or a little shed and in the backyard. It's like, holy smokes, good for you, man. Yeah, absolutely good for you. So Ocaso has four models now, um, and I know you, you've you got uh, a number of them in the hopper. Um, what kind of um, design, let's see, what do they say? When the government wants a new fighter plane, they, they put out design requirements. It has to fly this fast. It has to have this armament. So what kind of design requirements are you going to start putting out for future knives? Okay. Uh, you've, you've, uh, you've got the long slender one, you've got the, uh, sort of, uh, um, crescent shape, you know, what, what, what are you looking for in future designs? Um, I wish I had some prototypes. Well, I, Andrew Demko has turned in. So John Demko has handed in, um, a, a, a design. Um, Mike Wallace has turned in a couple other designs. Andrew Demko has handed in another, um, two, two projects. And I wish I had prototypes because I, I have no problem showing you the prototypes because that just shows you how long away along the way we are. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, slick slender, making sure they do have a little variation. I will show you a, a Wes Crawford prototype. I don't, so I don't know if you saw yeah. that. Let me, let me just say if, if, uh, if I, if any of these listeners are newish to knives, Wes Crawford is a legend and he's been around since the be like I first found out about him in the in the you know 90s at some point early 90s making some of the first tactical folders right Wes Crawford with uh, his father too oh oh his father also yeah, okay. him and his father you know Pat Crawford and Wes Crawford, Crawford so yes yeah so yeah they that name goes way back yes right? yes both of those guys I forgot the father and son so let's 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 check this out so so Wes Crawford has a certain design um and this is a prototype we we've got to change a few things up just a little bit we've got to maximize the blade to the handle a little bit more uh but you get the idea right yeah, so yes it's gonna have a carbon fiber handle uh, with a bolster uh, a, of course the classic pivot and then the wraparound um, deep carry pocket clip. And um, this will be a flipper along with a uh, thumb stud. So, and nice. I, what I like to do is I'll come out with at the minimum two skews on one design because my philosophy has always been, you know, one skew is just one knife, but multiple skews becomes a category. Skew. What's a skew? A skew, just a, a, a part number. Okay, gotcha. A part number. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. No, no, no. I, and you're right. It, you know, I say skew in my world on the back end from when I used to be, but you're right. This I need to watch what I say. But um, models, part numbers, variations. Gotcha. So, okay. so two variations become a category, not just not just one variation. Uh, so this hopefully will be coming out maybe another three months. Uh, it's slick. It's slim. It's slender. Uh, you know, price point still to be determined. Um, Wait, uh, before you put that down, I just want to describe it. If if uh, people are just listening, this knife is cool. It's got uh, bolsters and looks like carbon fiber uh, scales, but the uh, the blade is a really nice daggery bayonet grind uh, with a swedge that almost goes all the way to the back, but gives you a little thumb rest. Very nice. And and this is kind of a classic Wes Crawford uh, sort of look. Uh, it's it's definitely in his design canon and man this is cool it, and this this is straddling that line a little bit like uh the um the strategy to me it's uh it's gentlemanly tactical tactically gentlemanly you know what i mean it's kind of a it's it's a little bit more on the line than say the seton or the um solstice right right and you know what since i i actually have the sample that i bought Right. And just to let you know what took place, because you had asked this question, you know, what do the conversations look like? Mm -hmm. I basically take his design and just just ask, say, can we take it down a little bit? You know, because this is a little too big for, for our brand Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a certain uh, opening and locking system that, you know, didn't lend itself to the brand. So we changed it to just a regular old liner lock, mm -hmm. um, different clip style. So, you know, this answers. You know the, your question yeah you know, not to this 
Wow, that's a wild looking flipper there. And and I can see how you're like, yeah. this is very unique and innovative, but but not, you know, companies aren't set up to make this maybe, or maybe it just doesn't fit the brand, but uh, right. that's cool. So so you can take the, the aspects, the blade, the handle shape, and uh, you know, that that's those things are the real spirit of it anyway. And then- Right. And then refine it to, to Ocaso-like, yeah. right? Something, something that I would I walk I would walk into a store, look at, like, and then pick up and buy. Okay, let me ask you this, Rick. Uh, and and uh, you know, uh, hopefully this doesn't. I'm not asking you to show your cards too much, but uh, who are some of the other designers that, if you had like a, you know, we have fantasy football leagues. Uh, if you had your fantasy knife designer stable, who are some of the other designers besides the ones you've already landed, which are pretty impressive, that you'd like to have in that stable? Uh, Princeton. Have you heard of him? Princeton. Uh, Princeton Princeton. Knives. Um, I, you know, I talked to him and he was really a kind, kind individual. And, uh, I liked his style, liked his knives. Um, but he, he's, he's up and coming. He's rapidly growing. So, you know, he'd be picked up by uh, other big major knife brands and understood that, that, uh, you know, he decided to go, uh, with, with, with them of course right um i mean should i really be throwing out these names um uh i don't know just uh, uh, really what i'm asking is whose designs do you like not necessarily like who are you gonna reach his out to work with? his designs yeah. you know i liked his designs um and then i guess that right there you know I'm, i've been so i have i guess if you were the bullpen already all stocked up right so, yeah I kind of shifted my focus and haven't really been been looking out there just yet. So, for example, this Blade Show, I didn't go around doing any recruiting because I'm behind. I mean, there's yeah. a lot going on right now. So I don't want to get ahead of the company, ahead of the brand by bringing on and working on way too many projects. Sure. So, you know, I, like I, I guess that's the short answer that, that, you know, I can give you at this point in time. Well, uh, you're, but, you're... but believe you me, when it's time to shift and go back, you know, you ask me that question later, I can say, oh, my God, these are the guys I found out there. They're they're cool. Uh, they're making some great stuff. You know, You're at that people. part of your business, I think, uh, where where you are walking the tightrope. Uh, you've got to be careful about growth in both directions. You know, you don't want to go too slowly. You don't want to do go too quickly and overcommit and then burn bridges with with people. Um, but you're also at this awesome phase where you have this new company and you've got some some um, some clout built up with with your past and with your designers, you can start reaching out to the Princeton knives, to the up and comers, uh, the people who are uh, this untapped talent, and you could be responsible for bringing them to market in in some ways, and that helps them. But of course, that helps you too. Uh, you know that that's a that's a pretty good position to be in, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's been a great journey, and that's a great part of of this business. Um, but I'm really excited to get Kurt Merrick and his, his knife out there. So this, again, is just a prototype, right? These aren't going to be the colors, mm -hmm. uh, but this is one of his designs. His custom made, uh, made piece is called the Karma. Um, okay. and then we'll have to change the name. Uh, but this will be coming out of Italy. It's a, it's a modified Tanto style uh, blade. It's got the Damascus steel on it, uh, high-grade titanium frame lock, fat carbon, and so uh, the colors and the hardware color, that's all still being discussed at this point in time. So hopefully by the end of this year, uh, we'll be coming out with this knife. But this is really cool. This is totally a, a John Wick you know, <laughs> yeah. style knife that it will look really good in a suit. But it's, it's light. It's about three inches. Um, beautiful knife. I'm excited about this one. He's a man. He's amazing. Uh, Kurt Merrick. And I think his stuff is really cool. And, um, I talked to him for a few minutes at blade show. Very nice guy. And I was yeah. really, I was really hoping to get him on this show. And, um, you know, uh, not too many people say no. Um, and I don't mean that as, as a reflection on me, but you know, every once in a while, someone's just like, nah, I'm not into it. I'm just not into it. I'm into <laughs> naked knives, not talking about them. And I'm like, what can I say? You're so cool. And I love your knives. Please, if you ever reconsider, call me back. So uh, hats off to you for, for getting him. That's that's a that's a huge feather in your cap. Um, he's a cool cat, man. He's yeah. really cool. He, he's yeah, a, and his knives are just blindingly cool, too. Uh, so 
Well, way to go on that on that Tonto acquisition. That's yeah. pretty cool. Beautiful. Uh, um, so bef before I, we got to wrap up here shortly, but before we do, I want to see you had the um, you were about to bring out a knife case that you're uh, yeah. that you wanted to show off. And and I, and this I want to sort of expand and find out what other kind of EDC things you're interested in. You 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 touched on them uh, a bit, but our watches in your future. Uh, tell me some of these things that you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Watches. That's probably at the bottom of the list. Um but uh, the, the next category that you'll see is um, case slash leather goods. So here, here's a prototype wallet. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's got a little pocket. So the Seton doesn't have a clip, right? So if you don't want it just living at the bottom of your pocket, but you want it a little protected so it doesn't get scratched up, you know, I'll have a wallet that where it fits nice and neat there. Uh, it's cool. a front carry, slim, minimalist style um wallet uh money clip action that you can take on and off so if you don't want if you want it even thinner you know you can take the money clip off right that's cool and now you're ready to go uh i have little knife cases here that fits our knives um this will fit two of the solstice but it also has a flap that you can fold down mm -hmm. okay and then you can fit you know the large seaton or the or uh, Kurt Merrick's particular knife in there. And this is something that you can just sit and set on your desk. Um, smaller case for the smaller knives, smaller Setons. I'll change, I change the shape up on this, but this is a keychain. Again. Oh, that's cool. Something where you can place your, your little Seton knife in there. That is very cool. So I, I I love this edition of leather, um, you know, leather, steel, carbon fiber. All of these materials are so appealing to to people like us. I think I think leather is a is the great is a great next step. Someday watches, yes, but we all know the deep hole watches can be. Um, so you know maybe you can get you can entice people with the knives and then really send them down the hole with watches in a few years. <laughs> I've had I, what's that. And you're right. You know, I, I say it's bomb the list because do what you know, right? You know, I know knives, um, all the, the the leather. I love wallets too. You know, I yeah. have tons of wallets um, and pens. I love pens. You know, Mont Blanc was was the brand that I I went after and always carried a Mont, Mont Blanc backpacks and wallets um, and cases. But yeah, the wa the watches. Yeah, you're right. Have to be careful. Just you know, do what you know. And so far, everything else that that's come in in line with the Ocasa brand is, is what I, what I know, what I like in my style. Well, Rick, uh, hats off to you and uh, for Ocaso knives. I think this is very cool. I, and uh, I think it's great that, that you and your wife uh, do this together and that it's a, a joint thing, especially, especially considering all the combined experience you have in the industry. And then you're savvy at finding these great designers and, and pulling some really, nice work out of them to fit your niche. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about Acaso Knives. I can't wait to see where you guys go. This was great, Bob. You know, thank you so much for having me. And I, I definitely got a little bit more relaxed and it's just a full blown conversation, just, just knife talking with you. So I appreciate that. And I apologize if I was a little nervous at the beginning, because oh. um, I've never done this before. So, um, but thank you for having me. And I, I look forward to uh, continue our relationship and let's stay in touch. And stay tuned. You know, uh, we're just trying to make as many friends. And I, I saw that you you put our Instagram name on there, Ocaso underscore knives. And we're just looking to make as many friends as we can at this point in time. Um, so I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure, sir. We'll talk to you soon. Sure. Thank you Take so care. much. Good night. Do you use terms like handle the blade ratio, walk and talk, hair pop and sharp, or tank like? Then you are a dork and a knife junkie. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Rick Valdez of Ocaso Knives. Keep your eyes peeled on them. Um, like I said, uh, lurking around their table and handling all of their work. It is fine. It is really nice stuff. And uh, I know there's a big gentleman, uh, gentleman's knife uh 
you know, lovers, a uh, group of gentleman knife lovers out there, but you don't have to be a gentleman knife lover because these things are awesome. Just an EDC knife guy. Anyway, keep your eyes peeled for Ocaso knives and uh, another great interview right here next week on the Knife Junkie podcast. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.